Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in Popsy Studio and we are about to go live in five. Yo, 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 people, how you all getting on? Welcome back to yet another episode. This is your boy Popsy the Music Machine and wow, we have reached episode 11. Can you believe it? Episode 11. You know what? I never thought I'd get to this far, to be honest. I haven't actually made a lot of music in the last, say, four to six weeks. Uh, it's probably the longest period that I haven't been making music for myself or doing other bits and bobs. It's because I've really, genuinely... I've been concentrating on editing these videos, which is a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but I'm not going to yap on about it because, to be honest, I absolutely enjoyed the whole process because we are now going to go to my friend Lawrence who owns his company called Hayeswood. Hayeswood are um, wood manufacturers make very bespoke individual items for people that are well into their kind of woodwork kind of thing. Uh, I wanted the, the desk to be a, bit, a, a very special kind of a, a touch to it so I got him to make me a wooden desk. Uh, we're going we're to show you how the live edging he done on it. I wanted the desk to kind of rise and go down because to be honest I you know, most of you know me. Once I've sat down, I'm going to be sitting down for hours and I'm not going to actually get back up. Lawrence is going to go through the whole process of what, how he started out and what he, what kind of materials he used and how he varnished it up. But trust me, whenever you guys do come to the studio, it looks amazing. So without any further ado, uh, let's jump in the car and uh, take you all the way to Hayden's Wood. Oh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, do the usual, mate. You guys know. I don't want to me like that. Yeah. I'm going to put the link up here, do subscribe, hit the notification bell and uh, do like it if you like it. If not, I told you before, put the thumbs down. Anyway, God bless to each and every one for watching these episodes. You know, it means a, a lot to me. So without further ado, let's head to Lawrence and go and check him out. Uh, mind you, my driving isn't that good. So anyway. Sasrikal to everybody and uh, we'll catch you guys up soon. Up on table they can tell you. Lawrence or the Paidana, they go in a bovadia kamakita, Madala Bravadia Mistria. Yeah, oh by the way, what do you guys say of that, mate? So uh, big huge thanks to Prem for making that t-shirt for me. Uh, Future Shock Studios uh, hoodies and all that. Anyway, I'm not going to waste too much time because I keep batting on the round too much to it sometimes. Let's get going to... Um, uh, go and see Lawrence and see how the desk is made. God bless. Sasri Kal. Chachu. Abda. Chachu. Jan. Chum. Chachu. Vi pin nea. Tiari raklo. Tia panchal. Episode gyara pura dekhiye. God bless. Alvida. And Sasri Kal. Anyway, um, yeah, I've had to make another pit stop to the uh, SIG distribution to get some more rock wool um, because there's a panel that I need to put on the door. The reflections, the sound of reflections on the door were pretty bad. So I've just got the panel made this weekend and uh, just coming to collect from uh, SIG distribution. My supplies locally. Hi, this is Lawrence from Hayes Wood, just here with a quick audio description of the building of Popsy's amazing raising and lowering desk. So initially, just plank selection. This is standard pine, some lovely grain in these pieces. With the cross braces, this is biscuit jointing. So the biscuit's now in place inside the side of the plank. This facilitates a much stronger join between the planks. These are the cross braces, lots of screws belt and braces in everything I do. Once everything's been clamped and joined with the appropriate polyurethane glue, the piece sits for a day just to let everything settle and the glue to go off. Lots of excess glue to remove there, but always best to have too much glue than not enough. Once the glue's been stripped back, you're left with a solid tabletop. This is rough live edging, which is done with a grinder. As you can see, it's very rough, but we're starting to get some really nice grain definition on that edge. 
I always uh, try and emphasize the natural features. You can see just a knot in the wood there. That's after sanding. So you can see it's got that kind of uh, driftwood beach look. And again, some stunning grain. This is after application of the wood stain, which was rustic oak. And again, absolutely incredible grain definition there. Almost looks like tiger stripes, especially on that lead edge. And with a coating of Osmo oil, just to give it that satin gloss look, it emphasizes and highlights the ridges and the troughs even further. And again, I always go the extra mile by rounding off all the corners and making everything as smooth as possible, up to 120 grit. So I'm based in Sandy, that's where my workshop is. My background, actually I have a degree in sculpture, but uh, this is something that I, I've always done for pleasure and to make others happy. Uh, please stay tuned to his channel for future updates on his build. And if anyone is interested in having a piece commissioned by me, please do contact me via my Facebook page or via Google. Uh, the details uh, will be posted in the link below uh, or just search for Hayes Wood. So this was one of the processes. So the planks themselves, when they come into me, they're raw. So the thickness planer basically is uh, giving a uniform thickness to the timber. It also removes the top layer and therefore negates a huge amount of sanding from my point of view. So tactile. Again, these were the planks after planing. And once everything had been joined, it's uh, down to the trusty belt sander. My Makita is a bit of a beast, but it's lots and lots and lots of sanding through two different grades on the belt sander and then onto the orbital sander for two different grades just to uh, belt braces and everything. So this was how I applied the live edge. This is just done with a grinder. And again, there's a bit of an art form to this and I, I do draw on my sculpture background because um, there are certain parts of this timber that need to, uh, need to be naturally highlighted, such as knots and troughs in the timber. So I carve round these and with the additional sanding on the orbital, it gives extra emphasis. So this is just removing material rather than, than the fine detail work which comes later on. Dusty work. If anyone's interested in having a piece commissioned by me, you can find my Facebook page, Hayes Wood, or Google business page, also Hayes Wood. Just do a search, I should come up. You can read my reviews, and if you go into photo albums, <laughs> lots of dust. If you go into photo albums on my Facebook page, you'll find tens of thousands of pictures. I don't just do desks, I do tables, benches, pretty much anything made out of wood. Shelves, all sorts. So that's just after application of the live edge, rough with a grinder. Next step is with the orbital, smoothing all of that off and giving it a nice tactile, sculptural, driftwood kind of feel. And this is where you start to see what the piece will look like with stain because the actual grain starts to emphasize on that live edge. So you can see I've carved around that knot there and there's another knot and another and another. These are all parts of the, the wood that naturally would be uh, sticking out if it was a trunk of a tree. Okay, so this is just application of the stain, rustic oak, one of my all time favorites. I think um, Popsy and I went through about four or five different iterations of color. And as always, um, visits to my workshop to look at samples and discuss in detail are welcome.
You've got so much interest. Yeah. All the way along that edge is just absolutely. And you'll always that's one of, do you know what? That's one of my best live edges ever. So this is the application of the Osmo oil. So this would seal the stain and also it creates a second layer of stain and moisture protection. One of the added benefits of this is that it increases the longevity of the piece and it also means that really remedial work in terms of recoating is something that really wouldn't need to be done. Uh, if it does, probably about five, six years and it's just a simple recoat. There's no sanding down or anything else needed. One of the added beauties of Osmo is, it, again, it highlights that grain even further. Now, the, the, the final finish on this piece was satin. Uh, at the moment, it looks pretty glossy, but that's because it's wet. It dries satin. Before. Boom. After. I think you'll all agree that's a pretty dramatic end result. Now for the raised lower base. This particular unit uh, I think is one that Popsy selected. It's a very well made unit with presets and uh, manual raised lower. Just like a car radio you can preset. Just one touch and the base itself will go to the predetermined level. Which can be extremely high. I'm six foot three and this comes up to my chest. See you, Popsy, and look forward to making your headphone rack in the next couple of days. Definitely. Take care, buddy. You See you take soon. Care, mate. Cheers. Bye. See ya. Thank you.